Thank you everyone for joining this uh, session. So this session is where we uh, have invited one of our university partners uh, as a presenter. So as you know, JMAG uh, or PowerSys, we work very extensively with our university partners, uh, catering to the needs of their research and development uh, in, uh, activity. And uh, we have been, um, uh, JMAG has been used widely across many universities. And today uh, we have uh, Mohan Raj from Concordia University. Uh, he's going to talk about design of a series hybrid va uh, variable flux motors for extended wide speed performance. Just to introduce Mohan Raj, he is, uh, uh, he is currently pursuing his PhD in Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering in Concordia University. Uh, and he has a bachelor's degree uh, from in the same field of electrical and electronics engineering from Anna University, one of the prominent universities back in India. He continued to pursue his master's degree from uh, Karunia University in 2014 in Coimbatore back in India. Um, and also uh, continued to work as a junior research fel fellow at PSD College of Technology, another premium institute uh, back in India. As I said, currently he's pursuing his PhD in Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Concordia University, where he uh, uses uh, JMAG extensively. And his research interests include SMC for traction uh, motors, high speed PMSM design, and also wide speed operating range for IPM. Again, it's my uh, privilege to invite Mohan Raj onto the screen to share his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ved, for giving a warm welcome. Uh, so, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Mohan Raj Mutasamy. Uh, uh, today I'm going to present about uh, the simulation of series hybrid variable flux motors uh, for the extended wide speed performance. Mm, I'm pursuing a PhD on electric motor design at Concordia University uh, under the guidance of Professor Pillai. Um, so in this presentation compares the Alnico based VFM and the series hybrid VFM. Uh, and this presentation fo focuses on comparison of demagnetization current on Alnico VFM and a hybrid VFM. Um, speed torque and speed power characteristics of both the machines are compared. Uh, these two machines are designed by my colleague, Dr. Magad Ibrahim. So thank thanks to Dr. Magad. This section goes to the introduction of the presentation. Uh, JMAC is having the option to add two different magnets, even in the express mode. The preliminary analysis were done with the JMAC express before taking it to the JMAC designer, which makes our simulation faster and the analysis faster. So the figure one shows a section of the V-shaped hybrid VFM and the figure one B shows a complete model of the V-shaped hybrid VFM. The hybrid VFM consists of two magnets, such as NDFEB and Alnico. The thicker magnet is Alnico, and the thinner magnet, which is close to the air gap, is NDFEB. The Alnico magnet is less coercive when compared to the NDFEB. The PMSMs are operated at high speed using continuous flux weakening current. However, the continuous flux weakening current increases the ohm loss and the core losses and reduces efficiency of the flux weakening region. So besides the limited flux weakening capability, uh, fluctuating price and the limited resource of rarer permanent magnets have forced the industries to develop alternatives to the rarer machine topologies. Uh, so, so the replacement for the rarer permanent magnets uh, will, will, ma will make the ferrite uh, as a be better option. Uh, the ferrite magnets are inexpensive. However, when we go with the ferrite magnet, a reduction of the torque, uh, comp torque component is unavoidable when the, uh, when the ferrite magnets are adopted, since uh, the ferrite magnet has lesser BR when compared to the rarer magnet topologies. <clears throat> so the low coercive magnets, such as Alnico and Samarian Cobalt, can, com can provide comparative magnet flux density to the rarer magnet. Uh, so the variable flux machines are best suitable for the wide speed operating range. Um, so 
the alni cube will will be a replacement for the rarit magnet and also it will be a better option for the um, flux weakening mode which is the main uh, aspect for the traction motors this section goes to the specification of the hybrid vfm uh, the diesel in voltage for the um, motor is 600 voltage and then the machine is rated at 70 amps the ceiling ratio is uh, 2.84 so the highest ceiling ratio increases the reluctance torque component of the um, machine so the highest ceiling ratio uh, will help us to have the better torque when compared to the um, surface mount machines uh, the surface mount machines the ceiling ratio for the surface mount machines is going to be 1 so when compared to the surface mount machines the ipm machines are the better candidate for the um, uh, electric vehicle applications because here we can use both the reluctance torque as well as the magnet torque and the demagnetization level is two times the rated magnetization current for this machine that's 59 percentage Uh, this section goes to the comparison of alnico vfm and hybrid vfm uh, the figure 2 shows the alnico based vfm with a inverted cnc and the figure 3 shows the hybrid vfm uh, the vfms can be easily magnetized and demagnetized to the specific magnetization state by a current pulse um, as long as we use a low coercive magnet it is not necessary to inject continuous d axis current to reduce the flux in the flux weakening mode so this eliminates the requirement for the continuous flux weakening current uh, in the high speed region uh, that's called the flux weakening mode uh, which results in higher efficiency than the pmsms and the magnetization state is a percentage of magnet flux linkage to the total magnet flux linkage that could be produced uh, the, and also the magnetization state should be properly selected uh, according to the different working conditions for instance um high magnetization state uh, can be used at high torque requirement and low magnetization state can be used at high speed requirement so the high speed requirement will come under the flux weakening mode that's the above base speed region and the d axis current component may cause unintentional demagnetization of the low coercive field magnets so this is an important aspect for the variable flux machines with the low coercive magnets uh, it it can, it can create a demagnetization with a high uh, current pulse of the d axis so thus reducing the machine power capability at high speeds so in order to improve the power capability of variable flux machines hybrid designs are proposed in paper 1 um where both the rarit magnets with a high coercive field and the low coercive field magnets are utilized so the combination of alnico magnet and the ndfeb magnet will make the machine as a hybrid variable flux machine so the flux for the ndfeb cannot be altered but the flux for the alnico can be altered so this makes a complete uh, sense for the variable flux machine with with a hybrid approach and this section goes to the effect of demagnetization current on alnico vfm and hybrid vfm um, since the magnetization state of low coercive magnet is dependent on the armature current flux linkage is represented as a polynomial function of the armature d axis current it can be seen from figure 5 that the addition of rarit magnet allows them hybrid vfm to withstand a high field weakening current while the alnico vfm got entirely demagnetized um with a field weakening current equal to the machine rated current so from this we can uh, conclude that when you go with the hybrid vfm the machines cannot be easily demagnetized when we apply d axis current pulse but when we go with a complete alnico vfm when we don't have a rarit magnet uh, then it 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 will have an option to demagnetize it with a with a d axis current and the next section goes to the magnetization and demagnetization pulses mm, so the magnetization and demagnetization process is shown in figure 5 Uh, this analysis was was carried out by my colleague dr bigyan basnet and we can see that in figure 5 uh, the various pulses for the demagnetization and the magnetization and this this picture is taken from a paper where a complete alnico vfm is utilized um, so in figure 5 we can see that the machine is running at a rated speed with no load 
and is initially at 100% magnetization state, then at 0.02 second, uh, the VFM is demagnetized, supplying negative D-axis current pulse. So when we apply this negative D-axis current pulse, uh, the de demagnetization pulse exposes the magnet to an external magnetic field. So once the demagnetization pulse of one electrical cycle is removed at 0 uh, 0.04 second, the magnet flux is almost zero Weber. Mm. Uh, since, uh, so, uh, so similarly, the magnetization pulse is supplied at uh, 0 0.06 uh, second for one electrical cycle to increase the magnetic flux. So in this way, the ma magnet magnetization state of the VFM can be changed to the desired value, supplying an external magnetic field. Um, so the first waveform shows a current and then the this shows the flux linkage. So when we apply the negative D-axis current, the flux linkage is reduced here. And then when we remove it, it's, it's completely zero. Then again, we are giving the magnetization pulse. Then we get the uh, flux linkage at 0 0.08 second. So the magnetization and demagnetization for the real machine can be done in two different ways. That's offline and online. Uh, for offline case, the VFM is aligned with the D-axis while the phases B and C are shorter. Uh, supplying a positive current pulse to the D-axis will magnetize the magnet while supplying a negative D-axis current pulse will demagnetize the magnet. So this is, a, this is an offline method. And there is another method called online method. In the online method, the back EMF is measured when the machine is running. Um, so the magnet flux is then calculated using the back EMF and the speed relationship. So based on the magnetic flux requirement, the D-axis current pulses are supplied from the drive system. So these two methods were discussed in this paper three by Dr. Begin Basnet. And um, the next section goes to the torque speed curve for two missions, uh, which are shown in figure six and figure seven. Um, at low speeds, the maximum torque per ampere method is used where the current magnitude is fixed uh, and its phase angle is varied until the maximum torque is obtained. Mm, when the machine exceeds its base speed, um, uh, the torque speed curves are calculated using the maximum power technique. So there are two techniques here, the maximum torque per ampere and then the maximum uh, power. So uh, at the low speeds, the maximum torque per ampere method is used. And when the machine exceeds its base speed, the maximum power technique is used, where both the current magnitude and the phase angle are varied in according to the um, in according to maximize the machine power uh, while maintaining the terminal voltage below the drive system capability. Uh, so we always make sure that the terminal voltage is not exceeding uh, above the limit so that we don't want to boost the voltage. Um, it can be seen from figure six that uh, Alnico VFM has a uh, considerable power drop at high speeds as a continuous field weakening D-axis current has to be limited in order to limit the unintentional magnet demagnetization. Mm. This leads to a reduction in the armature current magnitude at high speeds. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the hybrid VFM has higher power at high speed mm, as, as the machine has higher resistance to demagnetization, which allows applying a uh, flex weakening current magnitude twice that in case of the Alnico VFM, uh, while only having a slight reduction in the magnetic flex linkage. Um, so, mostly the Talk speed curves depends on the uh, constant power uh, condition. Uh, so there are two methods to have the constant power. Um, so here we, we are having, we are, we are equating the equation for the flux linkage uh, with the D-axis inductance in, and the current. And there is another way to uh, have this uh, uh, power higher by increasing the, old, uh, by, by boosting the voltage of the machine. Um, the next section goes to the variation of salience ratio for normal saliency and inverted saliency. Um, figure eight shows the cross section of the two machines. They both have a similar stator, magnet size and polar. Uh, the only difference between the two designs is that the rotor barriers are eliminated in the normal saliency design to increase the Q axis inductance. Um, but in the Inverted saliency, we have the rotor, barrier, rotor barriers, which makes them 
uh, inverted saliency that's um, ld is greater than lq it can be seen that in the inverted saliency design um, can maintain the inverted saliency feature that's lq by ld slightly lower than one uh, for the current advanced angle higher than 75 degree on the other hand the normal saliency design uh, has a relatively higher saliency that is maintained throughout the simulated advance angle. Mm, so on the other hand, the normal saliency design has a um, relatively higher saliency ratio when compared to the inverted saliency emission. So this leads to a higher reluctance star over a wide speed range. So as the FEA simulation shows that the normal saliency VFM can produce about 15 percentage of uh, the higher total tar when compared to the inverted saliency design. Uh, so this is so so now uh, as most of the commercial vehicles are designed with a uh, normal saliency uh, it is understood that we can get more reluctance star with the help of um, normal saliency emissions when compared to the inverted saliency emissions uh, so this inverted saliency emission is a term which is um, a common in the spoke type missions uh, where we can increase the uh, ratio saliency ratio uh, not by just having the barrier, but by having the inverse salience ratio. Mm, this section uh, goes to the back EMF of two different magnetization, uh, of back EMF of the different magnetization states. And here we can, in figure 10, we can see the 3D model of the series hybrid VFM. And then the figure 11 shows the back EMF of series hybrid VFM for different magnetization levels. And uh, so here, as I said earlier, that we are going to have two magnets. One is Alnico and another one is the NDFEB. So we are going to uh, check the back EMF for the different magnetization uh, methods. Uh, so there are there are uh, uh, there are different methods to do this. Uh, we have we have used a method in which uh, we we took three different magnets with the three different magnetization levels. Uh, JMAC allows us to um, create our own magnet and magnetize our own magnet. Uh, depending on the requirement of the magnetization level. For example, if you have a, a magnet BR of 1.2, if you want to magnetize it only for 50 percentage, then we can call it as 0 0.6, 0 0.6 as the BR. So we can have that magnet to be magnetized for the, with the 50 percentage of the rated BR. So the same way can be done for the other uh, magnetization states for the 75 percent and for the 100 percent. So we can magnetize those magnets. Uh, so for instance, in our design, um, we have, we magnetized three different um, um, magnets with three different magnetization levels. So once if we magnetize those magnets, uh, we can save that as a different magnet. And then we can put that file in our, uh, we can import that ma uh, magnetized magnets in our file for the simulation. So in, in such a way, uh, we, we didn't replace the NDFEP, we replaced only the Alnico magnets with three, with three different magnetization states. And then the results were analyzed. And then uh, here the rotor is skewed with an optimal angle of uh, 10 degree according to the um, optimal uh, skew angle formula. And the irreversible Alnico is magnetized in different magnetization levels such as 50% uh, and then 75% and 100%. Uh, the maximum back of voltage is obtained when the 100% magnetized Alnico is used. Uh, so, uh, so from this we can conclude that uh, JMAC has an option to magnetize the magnet uh, for the different magnetization levels. And we can use that magnet in our simulation for the um, different analysis like back EMF and torque ripple, and also even for the speed torque. Mm, this section goes to the speed torque and power waveforms of the Alnico and hybrid waveforms. Uh, so the figure 12 uh, shows the torque speed curve of the Alnico waveform. Mm, the mission output power. Uh, also drops at high speeds. Mm, so this drop is not attributed to the Alnico magnet demagnetization, but but it is due to the field weakening. Uh, but but it's but it's to the it's due, but it is rather attributed to the fact the flux linkage of the mission is larger than the armature flux, field weakening flux. Uh, so so to be more clear, the condition for the constant power is not satisfied in this condition uh, because the condition for the constant power is uh, flux linkage. Uh, has to be equated with the multiple of the axis inductance and the rated current. So the d-axis inductance is a term which is which is fixed with the mission design, which cannot be changed later. Uh, 
uh that that may be other method for the external inductance but with the general uh, with the general design we cannot change the d axis inductance mm, we can change the current but for the uh, alnico magnet uh, then we, we can increase the current but then if we increase more current then the alnico magnet will be demagnetized easily so th that is also a disadvantage for the alnico based vfr and the and the flux link uh, actually there are two ways to have this constant power uh one is to increase the current or other one is to reduce the flux linkage mm. so here we can try to reduce the flux linkage uh, but with the help of series hybrid machine we can reduce the flux linkage uh, according to the requirement so that we can equate the equation with the um, current and the inductance because if we increase the current the current density of the machine also will increase and then uh, uh, it will end up in a requirement of cooling uh so uh, uh, as we are mainly focusing on the natural convection increasing current increasing the current is not the better way to do that so then another way to have the constant power is to reduce the flux linkage so to reduce the flux linkage um we can we can demagnetize the magnet according to the requirement of the flux linkage so so from the figure 13 we can see that um the power speed curve for three different magnetization states that's with 60% 80% and 100% magnetization so here we can uh, conclude that with 100% magnetization it is going to be operating like a normal ipm machines um without any flux without without the um, variable flux option so when we have 100% magnetize it's going to be a normal ipm machine so the normal ipm machines uh, when it is not designed to meet with the um, constant power the power will drop at the maximum speed so uh, so so we are going to have the 80% and 60% magnetization so when we go with the 80% magnetization which means the flux linkage is not going to be same as the 100% magnetization here the flux linkage is going to be reduced than the 100% magnetization so when the flux linkage reduces then we can equate then we can try to equate the flux linkage with the uh, ld into is so that that will give the constant power for us so that's what is happening here and again for the 60% magnetization is also the same case uh, when we reduce the flux linkage then we can try to equate the equation uh, so that we can get a constant power so this this option is not possible with the normal uh, ipm machines but only with the help of variable flux machines we can we can demagnetize this magnet according to the requirement of the flux linkage so that we can get a constant power in the flux weakening mode because constant power is the most important aspect for the electric vehicle applications and most of the electric vehicle applications um, demand this constant power mm. so uh, so without increasing the current we can reduce this we can we can uh, do the demagnetization with the jmac uh to plot this and again um as i said that we use three different magnets with 100% magnetization of alnico and then uh, here here the 80% and 60% uh, means that these magnets are not uh, ndfeb these, these deals only with the alnico magnets so we are going to have we are going to use the 80% magnetized alnico with the 100% magnetized ndfeb then again 60% magnetized uh, alnico with the 100% magnetized um, uh, ndfeb so in this way we can achieve the process on again for the when we when we feel, when we plot the power speed curve we use the same data as as like as we use for the back came of with three different magnets now then taking three different uh, mesh data for the analysis to put it in the rt model to get the speed torque curve um so we can we can say that um this issue possesses a design trade off in conventional pmsms uh, because uh, when when a higher flux flux linkage uh, is, generally the machines are designed with a higher flux linkage but the higher flux linkage would increase the machine torque capability at the low speeds but the main disadvantage is that it would also limit the machine power at high speeds so that's the case with a normal ipm machine so on the other hand this design trade off can be resolved in variable flux machines which is shown in figure 13 um, where we can have the ma fully magnetized at low speeds and then uh, partially magnetized at the higher speeds to get the constant power operation and Uh, so as a conclusion the inverted saliency vfms are suitable for the traction applications uh, but the low coercivity magnets will be easily demagnetized when the high opposing current is supplied in the flux weakening mode um so uh, for the for the traction applications the inverted saliency vfm is not the uh, best candidate when compared to the hybrid vfm uh, because the inverted saliency machine doesn't have high reluctance star um and also we in the inverted saliency we use only the alnico magnets within uh in the first design and in the second design we use the um 
um, I'll link you with the NDFEB. Though these two designs are with the spoke type, as uh, as we cannot get the motor electrons charged with the spoke type, it's, it's generally for the um, uh, flex concentration uh, factor, which is suitable for the low coercivity magnets such as um, cold spray magnets, and then for the ferrite magnets. Uh, so we are going. Uh, we have designed with the V-shaped hybrid VFM, uh, which is a very common design. V-shape is a very common design for the um, uh, for many commercial vehicles such as Tesla and Toyota Prius. Um, so even Toyota Prius, we can see that in all the versions of Toyota Prius. So, so we also concluded that we can use that V-shaped technique, but with the V-shaped hybrid VFM, which means uh, along with the NDFEB, we, we are going to have the Alnico magnets. Uh, so we are going to have more amount of Alnico magnets, we are going to have less amount of NDFEB, so that we can reduce the rarit magnet use, usage, and then we can increase this Alnico usage. And also we can get the higher electron star as it is a V-shape V -shape, um, design. And then we can have a very low magnetization and demagnetization requirement. Um, so the hybrid VFM is uh, suitable to operate in the flex weakening mode uh, to achieve the highest CPSR ratio. So when compared to the when when, uh, when compared to the normal IPM machines, when we go with the hybrid VFM machines, the CPSR ratio will be um, improved. So CPSR ratio is another important aspect for the um, electric vehicles. Um, so this hybrid VFM will be a better candidate for the. Um, um, electric vehicle traction motors. Um, and these are the reference papers which I have referred. Uh, so these designs were, uh, uh, the, most of the content were presented from these papers. So I thank authors, um, uh, Dr. Mahadi Ibrahim and Professor Pillai and Dr. Bigyan Basnet uh, for helping me with these papers and their content. And I thank you all for attending this presentation. So I would open for the questions now. Uh, thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mohan Raj, for, for the wonderful presentation. I know uh, Dr. Megad Ibrahim is also going to present uh, tomorrow at our conference, so we are yeah. looking for that. Yeah. And thank you for sharing uh, good research uh, um, papers and good research references here. Thanks uh, a lot. is open for questions. Um, okay. if, uh, if we have any questions, let me go ahead and see here. <clears throat> All right, so you do have a couple of questions here. Okay. Let, the first one, it's uh, uh, in figure 12 and 13, did you use okay. constant LDLQ? Oh. Uh -oh. Share your screen. Oh, I'll just go to that. Uh, mm, yeah, here the parameters for the LDLQ are not changed. Uh, no, but the machines are different. So the LDLQ ratios will not be same because um, the inverted saliency machine is with the um, um, spoke type machine. So the LDLQ will be, is not same for the both the machines. Okay, uh, that answers your question. Uh, let's see. The second question is, how do you tune your current regulator when one of the control parameter magnetic flux is dynamic, dynamically changing depending on the magnetization state? Yeah, actually, I refer the paper from Dr. Bigyan Basnet. He worked on this field, and uh, I think it's 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 uh, it's briefly explained in paper three. I'm sorry for that because I, I'm not much aware of the control. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it has been done with the J mark, but still, it, it, I didn't do that. It was done by Dr. Bigyan Basnet. Uh, the Paper three would be a great um, helpful for that, and uh, I could I could answer this maybe if they, if they would mail to me I can uh, ask them and reply back to that question for sure. Sure, perfect. Uh, the third question here is in Figure five, pulse current is injected. Uh, do you concern any eddy currents in NDFEB due to high frequency component in this pulse current? Um. No, for this analysis, AD current is not considered, but for the uh, future analysis, AD current will be considered for the uh, for this analysis. Okay. Uh, do you have a rough estimate or any thoughts on how much impact does this AD current loss in NDFEB give on the overall uh, efficiency, overall driving cycle? Um, yeah, because the AD current, uh, mostly uh, when we go with the segmentation, the AD current will not be a much problem. Uh, so when we are not going with the segmentation, this eddy current will be a huge problem for the magnet loss. Um, so for instance, if you are having a seven kilowatt machine, 
uh, if you're not segmenting the magnets, then we may have um, around uh, 50 to 100 uh, watt at, at the base speed. And then at the higher speed, the magnet loss will be higher. And this magnet loss will also uh, increase the temperature of the machine. Then this may, this may cause the demagnetization of the magnet also. So the segmentation, like four to five segments will be helpful for reducing the eddy current. But I'm not sure how much percentage for this machine. Uh, for a normal machine, it will be like, um, uh, as I told the values for the seven kilowatt machine, which I'm designing. Okay. Okay, so you, you also said that you have plans to do further analysis. Uh, yeah, for sure. Just, okay. Okay, perfect. So uh, we do have one more question. Uh, okay. And minutes, so let's uh, quickly address that. Okay. Uh, is it possible to simulate dynamic demagnetization or remagnetization in time domain while co-simulating with controller simulator like Mat, uh, MATLAB Simulink? Yeah, actually my colleague Dr. Bigyan has done that in a co-simulation process along with the MATLAB and then JMAT. So he did the same thing uh, uh, as like as the, um, uh, with the time domain and the dynamic controller, uh, which is, uh, yeah, so we can see most of the results um, in the paper three. Uh, the same the same thing has been already done with the MATLAB and JMAC, and also the papers has been presented in the title of co-simulation of JMAC, JMAC and MATLAB. Yeah, it's possible. Okay, perfect. Thank you, thank you very much, Mohan Raj, uh, for your thank you so much. this conference and uh, for your presentation. And uh, I think uh, if there are any other questions, you can always answer uh, through the app. So we yeah, for sure. I'm here uh, for the next session. Thank you very much again. Thank and you so much. I request everybody to move uh, to the next session uh, where we're going to talk about efficient motor drive development and validation. And uh, and in case uh, anything gets, gets stuck, always please refresh your page on Hua and we'll meet you in the next session. Thank you all and see you in the next session. Thank you, Mohan Raj. Thank you all. Thank you, Ved.